What is up guys, it's Alex the Magician here, back for another Heroes 3 video, and in this one we are going to be talking about how to catch a cheater. So this uh, was a video that was suggested to me by a viewer, so Wojtek, thank you so much for the suggestion, I think this is a really good one, and please guys, if you happen to have ideas on videos you would like to see me do, do let me know in the comments below, as I do highly appreciate those, and uh, whenever I get good ideas, I do like to do these videos just like this one. And before I get into this, let me make uh, one quick announcement or a couple of announcements actually. So today, Saturday, uh, we're actually going to have a showdown versus me kick and I'm actually going to be streaming that on YouTube if I don't have any technical problems with that. So should be pretty exciting and it's going to be my first try streaming on youtube in a while so i'm excited to see how that goes and if it happens to go well maybe i'll continue streaming on youtube i just want to kind of test that out and uh yeah i think today it was kind of a kind of a perfect opportunity a lot of you guys do know me kick we've played with him before and uh you know our games are always really fun he always pulls out some interesting strategies so uh yeah what better uh way to kind of start to the test on YouTube than with that game. So the start of the stream is going to be at 6 p.m. Ukrainian time, which is GMT plus three. And that will be 11 a.m. Eastern U.S. time for those of you guys who are on U.S. time. So feel free to tune in and I would love to see you guys uh, that are watching my videos on YouTube but maybe are not watching me on Twitch. Uh, I would love to see you guys tune into the YouTube stream. And if something uh, doesn't go right, uh, if there's you know technical issues or something like that, I'll definitely stream on Twitch. So the links to both streams will be in the video description below. So if you guys don't happen to see me on YouTube, then check it out on Twitch. And also the game with Lekshav, the tournament game that uh, some of you guys have been looking forward to is going to happen tomorrow on Sunday at 3 p.m. Ukrainian time. Uh, so again, GMT plus three. So uh, if you guys are, you know, kind of excited about that, then feel free to tune in there also. I'll probably be streaming that one on Twitch, but maybe I'll decide to do it on YouTube if uh, today's YouTube stream goes really well. So we'll see. Uh, either way, I will have the links in the video description, in this video description, so you guys can just check that out. All right, so... Without further ado, let's get into this video. So we're going to be talking about how to catch a cheater, right? And, um, you know, it's definitely going to demonstrate a few things that you will kind of need to know. And it's good to check uh, if you have any suspicion. So I'm just going to kind of go through these points, um, you know, one by one. So first of all, I also wanted to explain how the previous guy against me cheated in that Crystal Dragons video. So what happened there, and uh, I'll just load the game real quick. And I um, oh, loaded the wrong thing. Yeah, so to those of you who um, were not aware, basically he did the Crystal Dragons fight here and the Crystal Dragons fight over here, guarding an Artomos, three Crystal Dragons here and two Crystal Dragons here. And he did all of that with really minimal losses and uh, his army was just not really what, uh, you know, could have dealt with them that easily. And basically what he did, somebody, well, I don't know for a fact that this is what he did, but it seems very likely that this is what he did. Um, somebody showed this to me afterwards and basically he used a program that some refer to as a trainer. And this program, what it does is you can basically alter the number of your creatures. And, you know, there's, I think there's other things that it can do, but this is the main thing where, you know, let's say you have like 
10 cyclopes, you can make that 100 cyclopes or something like that. And the problem is that it's, it's difficult to catch. You're actually not going to be able to see that he has the additional army because he can just give himself additional army and then dismiss them before the end of the turn so you don't see that he has any extra army that he didn't get anywhere else and the problem is that this is all done client side right and then the game sends the information to the server at the end of the turn so it only remembers like the server only gets your state at the end of your turn right so if you did everything during that turn and then dismissed your uh you know additional army using that program then the server wouldn't you know you would just see that okay well you have the army that you had before you know maybe you're just really good at the game so i was actually thinking about kind of demonstrating this program but then i realized that you know i probably don't really want to teach people how to cheat but the point is is that if you guys see something suspicious do check that uh do check your saves and yeah so that's the first thing that you want to do right so the first thing is get the password from your opponent right and that's it's common it's customary to give the password at the end of the game and check it right away check it if it works if your opponent gives it to you and check you know load the game and if it doesn't work tell them it doesn't work sometimes people make mistakes but you know just make sure that you check it right away even if you don't have time to actually check the game you can check that later just check if the password works and if the opponent actually doesn't give you a password or gives you an incorrect password or something like that, you can actually report him for that, you know, because, yeah, cheating does happen and, you know, you do need to verify that he did not cheat uh, and if he doesn't give you the password well it may mean that he has something to hide so you can report to them for that you know I would say you know don't do that right away maybe he forgot maybe he had to go like try to find them in the lobby and ask them for the password but again if they just refuse to give it to you or something like that you can report them for that right so now, once you get the password, right, so how do you actually see if somebody cheated, right? Well, one thing that I will say there is don't assume that people are cheating. Like, uh, I personally like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And even if, you know, something happened that may be kind of iffy, uh, you know, I like to assume, well, maybe they're just better than me. Like in this one, for example, in this video, I was just like, well, maybe the guy is just really, really good. And I, you know, tried it for a long time. I asked better players than myself. And then eventually, you know, we all kind of concluded that, yeah, the guy very likely cheated. But before that, you know, I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so I would, you know, kind of um, suggest that you guys do the same, give people the benefit of the doubt, unless you get really, really suspicious, right? Now, if you do get suspicious, so what kinds of things can be suspicious, right? The problem here is that a lot of these will come from experience, like newer players may not necessarily know right away uh, what can and cannot be possible. But one of the things that was definitely suspicious in my um, next cheating video, the one that I posted like three days ago, was the movement bar. So the opponent was using a lot of his timer, but he was only using, he wasn't even using half of his movement bar. So here, you know, where you have the timer right below that, there is a movement bar that you see that can kind of uh, let you estimate when the opponent should be ending his turn, because usually you use all of your movement and that's when you're going to end your turn but this opponent was only using like maybe a quarter of his movement and it wasn't just one turn it was like seven turns in a row or like six turns in a row so that I was super suspicious with I was like how is he using so much time but he's barely using any movement like what you know that's not common at all you know when you're using the uh, especially with the eight hero um you know, gameplay, but even obviously, even if you're playing Jebus Outcast with one hero, also, it would be really weird if you don't see him use all of his movement, right? So that is definitely something that's suspicious. And other than that, I would say that the other suspicions would kind of come into play when you actually check the map, right? So 
one of these that I will also mention is if there was a disconnection, right? So the rules state that if there was a disconnection, like the server went down, you know, your computer crashed, his computer crashed, the game crashed, whatever, and you have to reload the game, then you have to, both of you have to repeat your actions as closely as possible to what happened until you guys got disconnected, right? So if that's a situation, if you guys had a disconnection or something like that, check the turn before and check the turn after uh, to also, you know, try to save it, try to save the state uh, when it was disconnected to try to see whether your opponent tried to do something different or not, because some people would. And um, that's something that you can definitely report them for as well if he just does something completely different. Now, once again, remember, this does not apply to a natural sims interruption, right? So if the sims interrupt uh, in game, like you attack your opponent, uh, or he attacks you, or you kill the same creature or something like that, when uh, the sims are still going, then this does not apply. Then um, when you or your opponent ha have to redo your turn, you can do it differently. You don't have to make the same moves, right? And it kind of makes sense because, you know, you have different information. And if you have to redo your turn, you're at a disadvantage anyway. So, you know, some people say that, oh, it's not fair, you still have to do the same thing. But to me, personally, it's completely fair because it's blue usually that has to redo their turn and blue is at a big disadvantage anyway. I think it's not fair that red has such an over overwhelming advantage of getting like to do their entire turn before you do, right? So I think that, uh, you know, anything that you, and it's you know, just the nature of a turn-based strategy, right? You just can't really do anything else, um, you know, because it's a turn-based strategy. So that's an, an inherent flaw in a turn-based strategy. Strategies. So, you know, if as blue, you can do something to gain a little bit of an advantage back from that, you know, I think that's fair game as long as that's within the rules, right? But Anyway, I digress. Uh, so that's a thing, you know, do check if there was a disconnection, do check if your opponent did the same thing, right? Now, afterwards, just start checking uh, if things make sense, right? You know, if you don't have huge suspicions, uh, like I did when the movement or when my opponent wasn't using his movement bar, you know, just check like in general, like check his biome, check what he had in his biome. And the first thing that you can check is the movement, right? So um, I'm going to load the other Uh, the other cheating video that I did over here and yeah, basically when I check this, right, and this will actually apply to one hero gameplay even more so because there, if you get extra movement, it's an even bigger advantage with, you know, when you can get eight heroes, it's not necessarily as huge of an advantage, but still it can be really significant. Uh, you know, I, some of you guys may have seen Lekshav's video where he just checked turn one and saw that his opponent was like 2,400 moves or something away from his town. It's just like, what? Like, you can't do that, you know? Um, and here, for example, so I checked this and this was essentially, um, you know, I determined that Valeska over here, first of all, visited the School of Magic. We can see that he visited the School of Magic. He also visited the Learning Stone and he also cleared the guard. There was a guard for the scons and he also cleared that with Valeska because uh, he needed the experience because of the experience that he had. Uh, he has 4.5k XP and this was 1599 Walking Dead and there was also a treasure chest there that he picked up and there was another treasure chest here that he picked up and there was nothing else that he killed. There was nothing else that he could have killed even, you know, he didn't go for, for the churchyard or anything like that. Now, 
The problem with that is if we did all of that, if we loaded um, the game, you know, so basically what he had to do was go for the school of magic, then go to kill the walking dead, then go all the way over here. And by the way, you cannot pass through this. So you have to go around or you have to pour man in the cons, then go for the learning stone and then come back here. That is way too much movement, right? So if I just, um, if I restart this, I'll show you guys. Just really quickly grab the army. Okay, so if I go for the school of magic, right? And then I go over here for these walking dead. So I kill them, right? And uh, I'm out of movement. I pick up this treasure chest, right? And I'm already out of movement. So <laughs> even if he tries to pour man, that's it. There is no way that he can go also all the way down here, pick up this treasure chest and the learning stone, right? And I'm just going to show you guys that he for sure did that, right? So suppose he can pour man, but still that would only be next turn, right? But... I'm just going to show you guys that uh, the experience more or less matches up. So if he did this. OK, so uh, we high rolled the chests. The chests were 1.5K for both of them. But see, he's, it's still not much more. It's 4.9K XP. So probably one of those chests was a little bit lower, right? But see, that's the only way that he could have gotten that much XP, right? And then he came back here. So essentially, he covered two days worth of movement in one day, right? So that is an obvious red flag right there. You know, it's like uh, somebody pointed out, uh, pointed out in... Um, uh, in the comments that potentially he could have dismissed Valeska and then bought her back to get like full moves, um, you know, uh, back. But that would be such an insane move. I mean, nobody would do that in a competitive game, uh, you know, in on the first turn, right? Maybe uh, you can do it a little bit later, but still it would be a pretty insane move. But on the first turn, I mean, that would be a ridiculous move to make. So... That's one thing. So movement. Movement is a dead giveaway usually and even more so on. So usually on the first turn, it's kind of easier to check, but you can check other turns as well. And with one hero uh, play style, it will be even easier to check, right? Because there's only one hero that you need to check. So definitely check the movement and um, yeah, if there's something suspicious there, then of course, like for from this alone, I could have already reported him, you know. Uh, so I think from this this part alone, it was already evidence enough that he cheated. Now, besides that, do check whether or not what they did was doable, right? So. <clears throat> And this comes with experience, as I've mentioned, because, you know, you do need experience to know what is and is isn't possible, like what creature banks are possible, uh, you know, with what army and whatnot, um, like some factions can take a size three hive on day one with their day one army. Some factions cannot. Uh, some factions can take a size one cons with their day one army. Some factions cannot. But... This was the uh, other suspicion that I had here is that um, on turn two, so this is the beginning of turn three, right? On turn two, he did a size two cons. This is not possible. You cannot, with his day one army, this is not possible to do with Castle with just your day one army, even with crazy morale luck, even with, uh, you know, s certain spells like, you know, unless you have mass slow, and even then it would be difficult. Uh, but yeah, this is just not possible to do on your day one army. You know, you would need to find like maybe additional meat in a box. You would need to find additional dwellings. You would need to have uh, some other tools that can help you deal with it. So just like that, uh, you know, on just his day one army, uh, it was just not possible. So 
those things come with experience, but you guys can check, you know, like uh, check what size the object was and check uh, like, you know, if he did some fights that seem kind of very unlikely with the army that he had, then that is definitely suspicious. And this also seemed, this was actually my first suspicion. I checked this first and I was like, what the hell? How did he, what? How did he do that? And then after that, I found the movement. And then after that, I found a third suspicion and the third suspicion was even crazier, right? So this one was, he did a size four. So over here, he did a size four red tower and also uh, like 60 Corsairs with an upgraded stack that were guarding the red tower with only his army of two angels and 24 marksmen. I mean, that is impossible. That is just, you know, if the cons is not, didn't convince anybody, it's like, oh yeah, maybe, 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 whatever. Dude, a size four red tower with only two angels, not even talking about the guard to it, which will, would have also been difficult because the Corsairs have no melee penalty, right? So, this fight is super suspicious as well. When I saw this, I was just like, oh my God, come on. Are you serious? <laughs> you know, this is obviously impossible. So yeah, so things like that, like I mentioned, it does come with experience, you know, knowing what you can and cannot do. But if it just seems super ridiculous that they were able to do something on army that shouldn't be able to do it, then, you know, it's likely that it could have been a cheat. So something like this, you know, yeah, if this was like a side two red tower okay sure maybe with two angels with like decent morale even not losing but a size four come on you just don't do enough damage with the angels and you will be incurring the retaliation damage back so it's just not possible right so do look for things like that. If something seems like it's impossible, just evaluate what they had, evaluate the army that they had and what they did with that army. Of course, better players will be able to do more with less army, but there's a limit, you know? There's no amount of skill will allow you to take a level four, a size four red tower with two angels, you know? The top players in the world are not gonna be able to do that, you know? Uh, even with something like mass slow and you know i mean maybe like maybe with some a good amount of mana with like mass slow and lots of cures or something like that sure you know it is possible but he didn't have any of those things he only had uh valeska with you know decentish stats uh leadership and whatnot but still just not enough damage just not enough damage to do that so check that and the other thing um, that I would say is just check their biome in general so this is what gave me the suspicion of the other game um, the like oops I guess he was blue uh, this is what uh, gave me the suspicion of like that crystal dragons fight um, which wasn't as blatant, right? But I saw that he did that, and then I'm like, well, you know, maybe, maybe he had some other army, maybe he had some other creature banks, and then I take a look at his biome, and I'm like, hold on a minute, he doesn't really have a whole lot here. He has a couple of pickets, he has an additional elf dwelling, another rampart town where he can get additional elves, well, he didn't actually, but he could have. And uh, another picket that he did, he had a hive here that he didn't do, but that's it. <clears throat> he doesn't have any conses. He doesn't have anything that would have helped him outspeed the crystal dragons. No refugee camps with like a phoenix or an arch devil or something like that. Unicorn glade here that he didn't take, right? So at this point, I'm like, wait, how? How in the hell? And then I see, okay, he has all of the clops. And, you know, most of his centaurs left. And then I saw that he also has the ballista and the medical tent left. And I'm like, okay, come on, you know. And then I saw that he did not only the break, but also the crystal dragons fight for the earth tome over here. So clearly something was up here, right? So just take a look at the tools that he has and what he has to do with them, right? And here, an Ivor without tactics, without first move to be able to slow the Crystal Dragons and with only a ranged damage dealing stack, that fight is super difficult. 
Uh, that fight is super difficult because the Crystal Dragons just close the gap right away. They block your uh, range stacks right away and you're forced to deal damage with penalty, right? Or you're forced to hope for morale and, you know, run away. Hopefully that they like don't block you and you try to like reposition and morale and get some like lucky accurate shots that way or something like that. But even then, it is still super suspicious that the Ballista and the Medical Tent survive, right? So it just doesn't make sense, right? So that's what I would say, guys. Those are the main things. So check the movement, check the biome, and check, you know, see if there was anything suspicious with uh, their movement or whatever, however, how they played, and uh, just see if it makes sense. Just see if it makes sense to do what they did, right? If you don't understand, you know, if uh, um, if you don't understand how they did it, well, try to think about how they did it. Maybe try to ask players that are better than yourself, like, hey, you know, uh, I'm suspicious about this. Like, can you tell me if this was possible, you know, and... Uh if, any, if nothing else, then you can maybe learn how to do it. You know, if you maybe don't know how to do it, but then somebody explains it to you, then you have learned something. Or maybe you will catch a cheater. So overall, those are kind of the things that I would suggest you guys do. Now... The final thing that I will say is don't get too discouraged about this because this doesn't really happen that often, right? You do have some cheaters, but honestly, I've played nearly 1300 games of Heroes 3 online and uh, this this was only two cheaters that I caught in that entire time. Now, of course, you know, some other people could have potentially cheated and I just didn't catch them. But, you know, I didn't really have any huge suspicions like that. So even if it was like 10 people, it's still a small percentage. It's less than 1% um, of all my games. So, you know, I would say, you know, you don't need to get discouraged about this. Don't really... Uh, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt and still, you know, most people still play with good faith and, uh, you know, a level of maturity that would probably be like, well, why do people cheat? You know, most people would even assume that it's like, why is it even fun? You know, I guess for some people it may be, but yeah, I would say that most of the community is more or less wholesome and, uh, you know, there are not that many cheaters around and, you know, they do get caught. So, uh, and if you do your part, to help then that just helps you know discourage cheaters and it just helps get them banned as well so do your part hopefully this video helped you uh, i hope that now you're more prepared more equipped to be able to catch any suspicions and uh yeah uh, so thank you guys for watching i hope that you found this useful and i will see you guys soon so again feel free to check out the twitch stream game with me kick today at 6 p.m ukrainian time lecture of tomorrow at 3 p.m ukrainian time and today it will be a stream on youtube so look forward to seeing you guys there peace out